Wine, the Terrence Gangster with you, a.k.a. OG Giggity, a.k.a. Mr. Answer Right Back, a.k.a. Peter Chow, a.k.a. Terrence Gangster with you. Man, I got a legend in the field, y'all. I got one of my homies in the field, you know, been through the trenches. Let them know who you are, bro. My name is Isaiah Johnson, uh, born in New Orleans, Louisiana, out here in Houston right now, uh, making a living for myself, working construction, staying at it, staying busy. So, all right, it's my understanding that what you did, uh, 16 years? I did 22 years and eight months. Oh, my bad. I had, I had a 30-year sentence with five suspended. I was 16 when I caught my time. 16 years old? So I was they, 16 so they, when I caught. So they tried you as an adult? Yeah, they certified me at the age of 17. Uh, and when I call my time. Okay, now where you did your time at? In Virginia. Called it in Portsmouth, Virginia. So you was in, you was in Virginia State Jail? Yeah, I was in Virginia uh, State Jail. Yeah, not fair state. So, so what? I got kicked. I got kicked out of the state of Louisiana until I was 21 or I had to do juvenile life there. So my mama sent me to where my father was, whom I didn't know. So when I get up here, of course, I was very rebellious. I wasn't trying to hear nothing. And, you know, I went to live my life. I locked up about a year after I came up here. Oh, okay. So how was it, being as though you're from Louisiana, but you're doing time in Virginia State Prison? How was that? I mean, of course, initially it was kind of crazy. You got people who, you know, especially with the accent, they ain't trying to hear that. You up in their city, you didn't kill somebody from their city. So, you know, they trying to uh, make your bid hard for you as, as much as possible. But then you had Buku people that was from out of state that was in Virginia. So uh, a lot of D.C. dudes embraced me. Uh, a lot of New Orleans uh, people was there, but, you know, they kind of was different. You know how our people are when we link up. We probably not want to fuck with them. I mean, not a deal with them at all, you know? Yeah. Uh, and, but uh, it was pretty tough at first, especially as a youngster. But I had some old heads that was old heads, you know, that put me up under their wing and kind of gave me the game, you know, let me make my mistakes, let me put myself in positions that I had to get myself out of. Uh, then when I got all the anger out of me, I started reading a lot, started studying a lot, started boxing too. Boxing helped me out a whole lot, taught me a lot of discipline, how to deal with my anger. Of course, I still got into fights and went to the hole a couple of times. When I first went in prison, I was in a hole for about nine to 10 months because I just couldn't calm down, you know, and that time there kind of taught me a whole lot about myself. I got sent to, uh, the maximum security in uh, Wallace Ridge, uh, where you stuck in the cell for 24 hours out of the day, maybe, maybe you'll get 45 minutes out of the day. That's where they sent a lot of the, the gang members, a lot of the killers, a lot of the people who was just up to no good. I don't know if you heard of the boy uh, Lee Malvo, but I was up there with him. He was part of the DC sniper. He was the young kid with the DC sniper. I was up there with him for about seven months until they transferred him somewhere else. All right, so give us a moment, run, give us an ep where you had it bad or you got yourself in trouble, you had to work where you like, man, how am I get out of this one? Uh all right, I'm gonna give you a problem, I'm gonna give you a good one. So I was getting tattoos when I was in there. And uh I had used the old head adapter. He had a Kobe adapter. And, uh, you know, we used that to kind of fuel the, the, the motor to the, to the tape deck to get our gun running. Mm -hmm. So I go down. So he said, adapter don't work. Walk off. And I said, well, it was working when I gave it to him. Walk off. So about 20 minutes later, when we come from Chow, this was, this was dinner time. When we come from Chow, he told me, come up to his cell. I ain't go all the way in his cell. I went to the door. And when uh, he said, nah, what happened to my adapter again? So I said, I told you what happened to it. So I'm getting kind of jazzy with him. He pull out this big ass lawnmower blade. And he said, I'm going to give you one more time to say what the fuck happened to my adapter. <laughs> so I'm 
<laughs> I'm bagging out the cell because I ain't, you know, I'm not built to fight with no lawnmower blade. I know how to uh, pick and choose my battles when it comes to shit like that. So as I'm backing up, the old heads that dealt with me, they was like, we wasn't going to let them do nothing to you, but we we had to teach you a lesson. That that ain't how you respect people, old people. You know, so uh, that was a valuable lesson. Okay, now, so what did the old head tell you, the one who pulled the blade out on you? After the fact, he told me, he said, if you're going to be a man in here, then you're going to have to be a man 24-7. You ain't going to get 30-minute breaks. You ain't going to get an hour break. You know, if somebody wants to see you in that kind of regard, then you got to be that same nigga that you was when you didn't see that night. And he told me, he said, also, if you would have just respected and been honest with me at first, then it wouldn't have been all of that. So, you know, he told me he pulled up on the old heads, pulled up on them, and they told him that, yeah, we're going to teach him a lesson. And that was my way of learning. Uh, I learned two things. Never get caught without your knife. And two, respect men. You know, if you gonna, if somebody was, I guess, considerate enough and respectful enough to give you their shit, then you got to return it, you know, with the same shape that it was in when you got it, you know? So how long you been home now? Two and a half years. Oh, so hold up. So when you come home, it was a whole culture shock as well. Like all this new stuff. Every, everything. I didn't even know how to use the food stamp card when they gave it to me when I got out. I had to ask the cashier at the grocery store how I used this. Wow, bro. Say, bro, what what did you think? When, did you, did you go to Walmart? Yeah, I went to Walmart. That's where I was at, Walmart. So now... What, what what did you think about when they had this self checkout line? How would you how, what what went through your mind with that? Well, I had somebody with me who was kind of oh. instructing me on how to do it. Okay, but it was mind blowing because prior to going in there, you didn't have any technology like that. Really, uh, man. You know, everything was different. The world was completely different. Cell phones was different. Even though I had one in prison, cell phones were still different. You know, when I got my first cell phone in prison, I ain't know how to use the uh, flip phone, let alone the touchscreen. You know, I had to learn how to do that by myself. Okay, let me ask you this. So you ever got, uh, you know, now what we say, double team, jump, while you was hey. in the city? Hey, hey. When I caught my case... I was in the city jail and the, one of the dudes who told on me, he was an adult already. So I was on my way to jail. So by the time I get to the block, this was in Portsmouth City Jail. He had them paid niggas to jump me because he was telling niggas that I told on them. So when I came up in the jail, I had my pre-sentence report obviously showing that this nigga told on me before the preliminary hearing. So the niggas went ahead and turned the, you know, they turned the uh, tables on them and banked him. But yeah, I had that shit done to me. Niggas, you know, niggas didn't like who you was. Niggas didn't like how you walked. They tried to jump me a couple of times, you know. So it's just a matter of, uh, I don't know, it's just a matter, man, of being who you are at the same time and 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 having some evidence to prove another motherfucker wrong, you know. So hold up, bro, because you know Baltimore guys say that bank. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so listen, dudes. Yeah, let me ask you. So you got into social media, like because people gonna want to, you know, you've been down a long time, and people gonna want to know and keep up with you to see how you adapted to society, what you got going on, like what social media you have where people could contact you. I'm on Instagram. Uh, my name is uh Saints Lover under Instagram. My Facebook is just my name, Isaiah Johnson, you know. Uh, oh, man. How that happened? <laughs> How that hey, happened? Bro. My, my Texas best... now. No, listen. I, uh, back in 1992, one, uh, one of the big homies out the Magnolia, Blackie Moe, he was a, a Cowboys fan, and I always looked up to him, and you know he never drank, he never smoked, so I was fighting behind him. And as I hear him talk about the Cowboys, like, all right, Cowboys, I like Cowboys too. It is just stuck with me, bro. The Cowboys. And since 1992, I've been riding with him, bro. Yeah, man. I'm mad so, at that. So who who your football? Who, yeah, who who your team is? 
Saints, bro. I'm, I'm a Saints fan. I'm LSU. I'm the Pelicans. You know, uh, I, 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 uh, I hold down the Raising Cajuns, UL, too. Anything out of Louisiana, I'm pushing for, you know? Anything. Well, you, I, see, I, I know you didn't say my team out of, out of New Orleans. Who? Tulane. Tomorrow, uh, anything out New Orleans. Uh, if Delgado had a team, I'd be pushing for Delgado, <laughs> you know? <laughs> you know, hey, bro, I went to Delgado too. That's where I got my GED at in Delgado, bro. Okay. okay. So I got hold a up. cousin that got graduated from UNO. All right, look. Um, let me give you. Let's let's do this. I'm gonna do one more minute because I see, I know y'all need to get home because we're gonna do this again because people gonna want to hear from you. Um, tell them also what all social media you have. Those are the only two. I'm just on Facebook. And Instagram right now. Uh yeah, them the only two that I got out right now. I'm on Instagram, like I said, Saints Level, and uh uh Facebook under my name, Isaiah Johnson. I got the Saints symbol as my uh profile picture. All right, now you need to spell it. You know, a lot of us can't spell now. We how we spell Isaiah Johnson. I S A I A H, just like the Bible. Oh, and Johnson yeah. is J O H N S O N. So y'all got that, huh? Saints so, lover. Saints lover, man. You ain't got to keep saying. They ain't going to forget that one on Instagram. Saints lover. Um, so, hey, bro. So, how, so hold up. You were 16 when you went in. How old are you now? 42. Man, you spent half your life in prison, bro. All uh, your 20s, all your 30s in prison. Uh, and for real, if I would have had a decent enough lawyer, I wouldn't have done all that time. You know, I caught a first degree murder. I pled guilty to second degree murder because I killed a guy in my apartment. I had I had my own apartment and everything. I was in the independent living program. You know, the way my case went, it was real crazy. Uh, my pops, he kind of put me in a fucked up situation. Uh, so I wound up having to do all my time, man. But, you know, I, I got listen. some more stories. I got some yeah, more but- stories to tell them to hear that, too. Yeah, this is what we're going to do. We're going to say that for your channel because people are going to want to hear what happened in the apartment for a man down in your apartment, what went on. So we ain't going to get it to him now. Can't give him everything. We got, you know what I'm saying? We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna, we're gonna let them come to your channel so they can support you because it's all about you right now. People going to want to know, um, just like how they ask me, like, how are you functioning now? Um, do you have a support system, you know? After doing all this time, you was a juvenile, bro. You was a child, and now you and a, a grown man been home two years, two and a half years. You say, I've been home a year and seven months. So you 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 been home a year before me, but bro, the world has changed now, bro. And it's a man, and we both now on social media trying to get it right, bro. But um, what I like, what I like that you on the same page I'm on. Trying to help the average youth because they're gonna want to hear, you know, from a person like you coming from New Orleans in another state, got to survive. And you, you really, it's like ET far home that you were from, you was a foreigner, you know what I'm saying? You was in, in somebody else's state, somebody else's jail, and you had to survive, man. And you made it out. That's a good thing, you know, but they're gonna want to hear crazy. more stories, bro. They're gonna want to hear no more crazy. stories. You know, the crazy thing, gangsta, I still feel like a foreigner, you know, and, uh, and you know, I spent more time free than I did. I mean, I spent more time locked up than I did free, you know, so this is a this is an adjustment thing for me. Right. That's good, bro. Um, do you got any shout out, bro? Because I want you to get home and we're going to do this again because because my people, they, they want to hear this kind of stuff on this channel. So uh, give me some shout out, man, before we get out of here. Uh, yeah, I got Buku shout outs, but I, I keep them limited. Khalid Kareem, uh, uh, my old lady Tasha, Latasha Harper, you know, a lot of people been supporting me. Well, not a lot of people, but a handful of people. Uh, shout out to my brother. He up there in Port Arthur, Texas. You know, it's Buku brothers that I was locked up with that I can't think of at the time. Dude named Javon Herbin. He's still doing uh, time right now. I've been locked up since he was 28. He's 57 now. 
you know, it's buku people that's still mm -hmm. doing, you know, what they do to keep to make sure that I'm still putting one foot in front of the other and being positive about it. That's good, bro. So we're gonna hook up uh, you down there in Houston. So I'm gonna hook you up with the Magnolia Twins and uh, OG Jerker Man from out the Magnolia there in Houston, and they got podcasts and stuff. So I'm gonna get you with them, and uh, we're gonna help you get your story, out, get your name out there, and um, we'll get you some money off your story, man, because you know. Uh, a lot of people make money off our story while we locked up. So now that we out, now we're gonna we're gonna make money for our own stories, man. You know, in the legal way. You know what I'm saying? So, bro, I'm gonna be here for you and help you out. But um, you know, we press for time. Plus, I want y'all to get on because y'all done pulled over. I don't like that. But they kept breaking up, and people gonna want to hear this. Cause my audience, they be tripping. They be want to hear everything, bro. So, um, bro, thank you, thank I'm you for, for your time. I'm off on the weekends. So a nigga could look a little better. You heard me? I just got all the, the construction gear on right now. <laughs> hey, homie, let me you know tell you something. Let me tell you something about my people, bro. They don't worry about how you look. They want to hear the message. If you, if, if you look at my channel, I be at work with, with different shirt with my hood on. Man, they don't care. They want to hear the message. They don't care about how you look it, bro. And you know what I'm saying? Now, now here's the thing. Because uh, you made it known you got old lady. So, so the women that, that be on my channel, they already know you're taking. So... They gonna just take the message. They still gonna watch you, you know. But they know you got a woman now, bro. So you let that be known, you know. Uh, yeah, let it be known. I yeah. don't hide the relationship. You can't she do been that, more bro. Body, you heard me? That's good. So listen, bro. God will. Um, we can try to hook up this weekend. Well, let's get together this weekend, and um, I'm gonna help you also put your stuff together so they can come to your channel and hear your story over there, bro. I'm with All it, right? bro. I'm definitely. I'm definitely All right. It. All right, man. Thanks for coming through. We out, bro. Yes, sir. Bye.